Their eyes are watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, chapter 20. Because they really loved Janie just a little less than they had loved Tea Cake, and because they wanted to think well of themselves, they wanted their hostile attitude forgotten. So they blamed it all on Mrs. Turner's brother and ran him off the muck again. They'd show him about coming back there, posing like he was good looking and putting himself where men's wives could look at him. Even if they didn't look like it was his fault, he had put himself in the way. Nah, I ain't mad with Janie, Stomp went around explaining. Tea Cake had done, had done gone crazy. You can't blame her for protecting herself. She was crazy about him. Look at the way she put him away. I ain't got anything in my heart against her, and I never would have thought the thing, but the very first day that that lap leg nigga come back here making out he was looking for work, he come asking me about how was Mr. and Mrs. Woods making out. And that goes to show you he was up to something. So when Stu Beef and Bootney and the rest of them got behind him, he come running to me and save him. I told him, don't come to me with your hair blowing back because I'm going to send you. And I sure did, the bitches, baby. That was enough. They eased their feelings by beating him and running off him off. Anyway, their anger against Janie had lasted two whole days, and that was too long to keep remembering anything. Too much of a strain. They had begged Janie to stay on with them, and she had stayed a few weeks to keep them from feeling bad. But the muck meant tea cake, and tea cake wasn't there. So it was just a great expanse of black mud. She had given everything away in their little house except a package of garden seed that tea cake had bought to plant. The planting never got done because he had been waiting for the right time of the moon when his sickness overtook him. The seeds reminded Janie of tea cake more than anything else because he was always planting things. She had noticed them on the kitchen shelf when she came home from the funeral and had put them in her breast pocket. Now that she was home, she meant to plant them for a remembrance. Janie stirred her strong feet in the pan of water. The tiredness was gone. So she dried them off on the towel. Now, that's how everything was, Phoebe, just like I told you. So I'm back at home again, and I'm satisfied to be here. I done been to the horizon and back, and now I can sit here in my house and live by comparisons. This house ain't so absent of things like it used to be before TK come along. It's full of thoughts, especially that bedroom. I know all them sitters and talkers going to worry their guts into fiddle strings till they find out what we've been talking about. That's all right, Phoebe. Tell them. They's going to take, they's going to take my admiration because my love didn't work like they love if they ever had any. Then you must tell them that love ain't something like a grindstone. That's the same thing everywhere. Do the same thing to everything it touch. Love is like the sea. It's a moving thing, but still in all, it takes its shape from the shore it meets, and it's different with every shore. Lord, Phoebe breathed out heavily. I done grow ten feet higher from just listening to you, Janie. I ain't satisfied with myself no more. I means to make Sam take me fishing with him after this. Nobody better not criticize you in my hearing. Now, Phoebe, don't feel too mean with the rest of them because they's parched up from not knowing things. Then meat skins has got a rattle to make out they's alive. Let them consolidate themselves with talk. Of course, talking don't amount to a hill of beans when you can't do nothing else. And listening to that kind of talk is just like opening your mouth and letting the moon shine down your throat. It's a known fact, Phoebe. You got to go there to know there. Your papa and your mama and nobody else can tell you and show you. Two things that everybody's got to do for themselves. They got to go to God and they got to find out about living for themselves. There was a finished silence after that. So for the first time they could hear the wind picking at the pine trees. It made Phoebe think of Sam waiting for her and getting fretful. It made Janie think about that room upstairs, her bedroom. Phoebe hugged Janie real hard and cut the darkness in flight. Soon, everything around downstairs was shut and fastened. Janie mounted the stairs with her lamp. The light in her hand was like a spark of sun stuff washing her face in fire. Her shadow behind fell black and headlong down the stairs. Now in her room, the place tasted fresh again. The wind through the open windows had broomed out all the fetid substance, fetid, ap, fetid feeling of absence and nothingness. She closed in and sat down combing road dust out of her hair, thinking. 
the day of the gun and the bloody body and the courthouse came and commenced to sing a sna a sobbing sigh out of every corner of the room out of each and every chair and thing commenced to sing commenced to sob and sigh singing and sobbing then tk came prancing around her where she was and the song of the sigh flew out of the window and lit it in the top of the pine trees tea cake with the sun for a shawl of course he wasn't dead he could never be dead until she herself had finished feeling and thinking the kiss of his memory made pictures of love and light against the wall here was peace she pulled in her horizon like a great fishnet pulled it from around the waist of the world and draped it over her shoulder so much of life in its meshes she called in her soul to come and see